Stress Away Tech Tips. We're still thinking of a name to call this. Hope you're enjoying the, the series. This is where myself and Pete from Tech My Stress Away just sit down and talk through some aspects of running your WordPress website, some hints and tips so you can keep your WordPress website up, running, hack free, speedy, safe and secure. Uh, it's what we do all day every day for our clients. Our clients like to focus on what they're best at, which is their business, and then we manage their WordPress site for them, making sure that everything's safe and secure, as we said, running fine. We do unlimited edits for our clients as well, so rather than wasting time, wasting time updating the site, they send them in to us. We also get a lot of questions, as you can imagine, to take my stress away, so once or twice a week we sit down and talk through some of the things that can help you look after your WordPress website. And we're going to talk about speed, speed and performance of a WordPress website. We love WordPress. However, we're not blinkers and saying that it doesn't have its flaws. And some of the flaws are that it needs updating and looking after. Yeah. And if you've had a WordPress website for any length of time, there are things on there that can start to what we call blow to the site and slow it down. So we're going to run through some of the questions we've had in. Pete, you've got some tips to give to people to help them speed it up. So to help with the speed and performance of your WordPress website, what's the, the first thing they should be looking at? Well, the foundation that it's built on, so yeah. hosting account. Um, a lot of people, especially when they're not technically minded, don't really understand hosting, especially when it comes to speed and, and yeah. things like that. But, but sorry, so one of the things we do when a client comes in, we do a health check first of all, isn't it? Yeah. And we know there's a wide variety of uh, places to host a site from free to high cost and we well, can remember if you use free you get what you pay for if you use low cost you in most cases get what you pay for there's some good low cost hosts out there yeah. isn't it but always go for a good host yeah that's a good the best foundation because what you've got to remember as well is that they're working to a budget so if you're paying next to nothing they need to get as many people as possible onto yeah. that one server to make it viable for their business. Yeah. Um, also, you'll get a good quality host will build the server for speed. So there's certain things they can do to have a good foundation for speed in general, just the way they set up the host, you know, initially. Um, obviously, we recommend SiteGround, they do a good job yeah. of that, and it is, you know, the, the fans of WordPress. So, they do provide tools and yeah. that kind of stuff that helps you. And the support's pretty good as well. So Pete knows WordPress inside out. I'm the tech for the non-technical. Uh, whenever I've needed to reach out to SiteGround, the support's been really good as well. Um, next thing that we talk about, I know you talk about quite a lot, is a caching plugin. There was, actually, there was one thing that we oh, forgot to oh. about, speak about was um, with SiteGround, you can choose a specific data center. So I think they offer three, maybe five. Now, one thing, if you do use a host where you can choose where you want to host in the world your website, yeah. you know, what server, where, what location, um, you should bear in mind who, who your traffic's coming from. Yeah, so basically. where your traffic's coming from. So say, say our target was the US, we would really want the hosting actually in the US. On the US server. So, yeah, yeah. It's, not the, it's not the company, it's where they offer different locations. And... What you need to remember about that is, is because you're basically making the distance shorter. So yeah. the guards of how good the server is, whatever the connection is, obviously the closer the visitor is to the actual where the, the physical website is hosted, is going to speed things up. Yeah, right. So just to bear that in mind, if you do have a choice where you can do that. Perfect. So I can have that as well. Yeah. yeah. So go back to the, the caching plugin, you explain what one of those is? Yeah, well basically what... the, the what kind of slow WordPress down is because it relies on a database. So when a page is loaded, it can send a load of instructions to the database, gather the information with PHP, and then output it in HTML to the right. visitor. I'm following. So yeah. um, with what caching does, it basically kind of puts together a snapshot so all that doesn't need to happen. So someone can kind of see the page without all the heavy lifting happening while yeah. they're waiting to view the page. That's generally what a caching plugin does. Great. Speed, speeds it up for the non-technical. Again, with the hosting, yeah. some hosts have their own caching. So again, that's something that's worth checking your host before you go down the, the WordPress plugin yeah. route. Site around 
Do you think it's better then if, yeah, I know site ground have, a, have their own caching, so if a good host has good caching, that's better than having another plugin in your site. Yeah, yeah. Because it's just obviously just adding a bit more work to yeah. WordPress itself. Whenever you add a plugin, you're adding some form of work to WordPress. Okay. Ideally, you want the server doing the actual heavy lifting, which is your hosting. Perfect. Minutes. The next one, another acronym, CDNs. CDN and Content Delivery Network. That's the one, yeah. Um, How can that help? Similar to what we were saying there, um, if you would probably use a, a CDN more if you're allowed to have a, a, a worldwide audience, mm -hmm. so an international audience. So the way to try and keep this as simple as possible is a CDN company, so say like Key CDN is one of the popular ones, yeah. they'll have servers around the world. So then what will happen is all the resources such as CSS files, images, um, JavaScript files, anything that can kind of slow down the, the loading process will be hosted all around the world. So when a visitor comes to visit your website, they'll be pulling resources from the, closest. the location closest to them. Perfect. Yeah. And cost wise on CDNs, I know they vary. Um, it, generally, it depends on how much you use. Yeah. So they charge, it's a bit like Thanks. Amazon S3. Yeah. They, they, they charge, you know, they give you some kind of limits and you charge it for that, but it's quite low cost. Cause yeah. Unless you've got a really high traffic side, then. Great. So we go from CDN networks, yeah, which not everyone will use, to something everybody virtually uses on, on WordPress is a theme. Yeah. So what can people look at from a theme to help with the speed? Um, well, I mean, description may say that it's fast loading. Unless you're technical, there's probably, to be fair, not a lot you can really check. Um, popular themes, so in the WordPress directory, it will tell you kind of how many active sites are using it. Popular themes, if there are issues, will probably obviously get highlighted a lot quicker. Yeah. Um, there's a few themes, WP, Ocean WP, Astro, there's a few themes out there that are built for speed, so just kind of look around, but just bear in mind that a badly coded theme can affect. We'll slow it down. Yeah. Yeah. Next thing is, we'll talk about images, audio and video files. So images first, we'll talk about CDN, so you, you could put images on your CDN network. Yeah. If you're not going to use a CDN, then you can optimise an image. Just yeah. explain that. There's a few, yeah, there's a few plugins that will optimise images. Um, basically what you want to do is you want to log, um, decrease the file size. So what's, what, what takes time is that image files can be quite large in size, yeah. actual file size. So obviously when a visitor comes, they have to download these files. So if you have a lot of images, you have to download all the images. Prime example, we had a client in the craft market and yeah. she would take photographs of her craft completed and then upload, if I remember, the full size photograph. Yeah. and then make WordPress resize it. Yeah. So not only was she taking up hosting space, the time taken to drag that file down and then resize it was slowing things down, wasn't yeah. it? Because that's what images can cost, like maybe two, three megabytes yeah. per image. So they have to, it will pull down the whole image. They'll still download the full-sized image. Yeah, and then, and then inside WordPress, there'll be some code that resizes it to the size you want it in your browser. So if, if you can, or what I'm saying, if you can then resize it before you upload it, yep. that will help. Or some, some plugins will do that as well right. for you, yep. if you specify what size you want. Um, Great, so audio video files then. I know we saw a video like this one, yep. so we don't upload video or audio to our hosting, do we? We use, no. we use Amazon S3, but yep. there are things like Vimeo and other video even, hosting. Well, even YouTube, yeah. YouTube video, you, know, you can host it there, use their resources, it, obviously if it's not a paid product where yeah. you want to hide it kind of thing, it can help with your marketing as well, so that'll help you kind of get it out there. Yeah. So there's a, there's a you know, two, ways, cost, yeah. Yeah. two ways of like, yeah. benefiting from doing but that. The thing. underlying thing is, if you can, don't host audio and video on your own hosting account. Um, let's talk about inactive plugins then and widgets. I know if you're, you're hot on this, always update plugins, always keep them updated, but if you're not using them, or you've, you've uploaded it, tested it out, decided it's not for you, then remove it, is that right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's again, that's really a security point because the more, thing, more, the more ways a hack can get into your site, obviously, the less secure it is. So if you've got plugins in there that's not doing anything, then you just add in an area where potentially a hack could get in. Yeah. So not just from a performance point of view, just the general.
general maintenance thing is just to get rid of yeah. plugins that you're not using. I'm smiling now because you might not be able to hear this. If you can hear some sounds of water, it's because our, our office dog has come in and taken a drink from his bowl. This is Zach, the auto-responder dog. You probably can't see him, but he's, he's wandering around. I introduced to him once uh, at one time. So that's audio and video files. Um, we've talked about replacing and removing inactive plugins and widgets. A um, couple of things which I know I, I look at sometimes is, you know, making pages load quicker. So on the home page, you know, keep snippets of posts down rather than have the whole posts. Um, try and keep the number of posts that are appearing on your home page. You know, let's yeah. have 20 on, let's keep it to three to seven. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean that's more if you're a blogger, yeah. basically. If you're you know doing a lot of posts and it's on your home page, like you say, yeah. the traditional way, WordPress would sell all your all your posts on the home page. Try and minimise it just because obviously the more a page has got to load on it long it's going to take. Yeah. And then one for you, optimising databases. We hear that as well, make sure your database is optimised, what does that mean? Um, well basically, like I said before, the database is a big part of how WordPress works. It stores a lot of the, well, all the information, all your settings, the actual text, everything, the way the page looks, and all, all them kind of things. So the longer or the more, the more things you add to your site, so the more content, the more plugins, the more you know, themes, every, every, whatever you add to your site can potentially affect the size of the database. The bigger the database, the slower it's going to be because it has to obviously query a yeah. big database. If you imagine a database as a big spreadsheet, the more plugins you add, the more fields you get on your, on your spreadsheet and the more it has to search yeah. to find the information. So you can get some plugins that um, help with maintaining that. Um, one issue I have found is that if you're the type of person that, that tries a lot of new plugins and then even even when you delete them, what you can find is that it'll still leave information in the database so it, in theory it doesn't clear up after itself. Yeah. Great. Now just to prove this is live, you know, come here, come here, come here. Let's show, let's show. There we go. There's Zach, the Hutter Responder dog. He's wandered in. Let's let him out. Long play. There we go. You should edit that out or I might leave it in there, I don't know. Okay, let's talk about hot linking, disabling hot linking, and what happened to one of our clients. Yeah, well, basically, with hot linking, what happens is that Google will index all the images on your site. And what people will do, sometimes they do it in a good way, or in a way where they don't realise what they're doing. Yeah. They'll find the image on Google and they'll literally just enter the link on their site. So rather than download it and upload it to their yeah. own, they just link, link, link it straight to, to the image on your hosting basically. So then what happens is if you get a site that's getting a lot of traffic, that's using up your resources because it's pulling the image from your hosting account. Yeah. So obviously that can cause problems with, with between you and your own hosting company. Um, and it's just not a nice thing to do. Like I said, some people do yeah. it by accident, some people do it on purpose. Um, but what you can do most hosting companies inside their control panel will give you a way of disabling hot linking so it's not specifically a wordpress thing it's something you would do inside your hosting account great okay a couple more things to help people with speaking up the site we've talked about cdns can you just explain cloudflare and how that works well basically what what cloudflare does is it is like an intermediary in the, Intermediary. Yeah, <laughs> that one. Uh, between um, your hosting account and the internet. Right. So what they will do is the visitor will come through their servers and they'll see if they're a good or a bad visitor. If they're a bad visitor, they'll get rid of them. If they're a good visitor, they'll let it come through. So basically, it, it helps get rid of bad traffic. Yeah. So obviously, you don't want bad traffic coming through to your server because that's going to affect the server, the resources you're using. So it's just kind of something that sits in between and gets rid of great that stuff. And one which I know whenever we do a health check for a client, so when a client comes on board, we do a complete health check for their site, and we also do one off health checks for people who come to and say, Can you check our site out and tell us yeah. what's right, what's wrong? One thing that always comes up is the PHP version that they're running or the host is running, is that right? Yeah. Yeah. So how what what is it and why is it important? Well, it's PHP is a big part of how WordPress works. That's the scripting language that, that basically WordPress uses for the whole site. 
Yeah, it's not, I, 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 and across the web, to be fair, it's a big thing on PHP. Um, a big issue in WordPress is a lot of people are using a very old version of PHP on their hosting account. So this is not controlled by WordPress, it's yeah. controlled by your hosting account. Which we said before about get a good host. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and what, even, even then it's not down to the host, it's because a lot of people that are using WordPress don't understand that they need to select a certain version of PHP. Right. So I suppose that's an educational thing in yeah. WordPress and, you know, it, it's kind of everyone's problem. So we won't say what version they should be on now because people could be watching this at any time. How do they check what the latest version is and what they should be using? Um, there is plugins that will let you check what PHP version you've got, there'll also be a way in your hosting account to do that. Now, the problem is we can't really give a specific way of doing it. Because it's hosted different. Yeah, they all, do, they all do different ways to check the version, they all do different ways of how you actually choose the version that you want to use. Get onto the host support then. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, most, any kind of decent host will have some kind of article or something, or even if they have a forum, I suppose yeah. you could ask the question. Um, but you'll generally find something, but it is something you need to kind of know about is I think the last time I looked it was 60% of WordPress sites are now using a version of PHP that's no longer supported right. which is a security issue because if it's no longer supported or what's called end of life security releases are not done in by yeah. the PHP community so yeah. you're basically making yourself a target by using an old version of right. PHP well, I hope that's been useful. I hope there's uh, several ideas there that you can use to speed up your site. In this day and age, you know, a slow loading site or even a site that doesn't load as quick as your competitor is a, is a detrimental to you and visitors will just bounce away. So go back over this video, make notes of the speed hints and tips that Pete's given and start to look at them and put them into your site. If you would like us to do a health check on your site or us to manage your site, so we look after your site on a, a daily, weekly, monthly basis, make sure it's up to date, it's running correctly, it's safe, it's secure, it's got backups, it's running at an optimal speed, and for us to do any edits and updates on your site you wanted to do, go over to techmystressaway.com, that's T-E-C-H, techmystressaway.com. Have a look around the site, have a look at the different plans that we offer, check us out. If you've got any questions, we've got live chats, myself, Pete and the team will be answering that for you, or you can send in an email at any time and we'll be delighted to help you. So uh, thanks again, Pete, and we'll see you on another tech tip from Tech My Stress Away. Thanks for watching.